So after the short break, we decided to come back with the um, Q and A podcast. Uh, so sh first of all, shout out to Beyond Plus members. Uh, as always, we will give a priority to their to their questions, and let's get the credit to those who support us the most on all star GM levels, uh, which is Polus Tinteris, Hoopman, Kristaps Pukitis, Gabrielu Serva, Sports Cars Time, Luka Shuchevich, uh, Yunut Gergesko, Alex Siregotis, and David David Zamzla. Uh, you can also join Beyond Plus community on basketnews.com slash plus. Uh, no, and there will be a lot of extra features that you will get uh, with this uh, subscription, starting from full Beyond Plus, uh, full Urbonus Q&A episodes, because the uh, the entire episode of this Q&A session will be available only for Beyond Plus members. Uh, and as well, although it's an off season and people might say, so what kind of content are you gonna deliver during the uh, summertime? I believe that there will be a lot of interesting stuff, starting from rumors uh, that we are going to provide only to Beyond Plus members. Uh, from this week, we'll start, uh, we will publish an article that we will update uh, throughout the summer with the behind the scenes information that is not published, that is not very well known, heard. Uh, and I think it will be a, a worth, uh, worth a look uh, throughout the season to follow and to understand uh, to, to find the difference between the real information and a lot of bullshit that is uh, spread on, on Twitter. Uh, I believe you will also do some some video breakdowns, right? What, sure. what was your I'm, plan for, for the summer? The domestic leagues, leagues haven't finished yet, so yeah. we have some interesting things happening in France, for example, where yeah. Ben Banyama has... He had a very uh, close game in Greece, actually. Yeah, very surprisingly cl close. Surprisingly, after Pau almost, you know, blew the semifinal. Yeah, not, not almost, but you know, it, it went to five games. Uh, so I believe finals. Germ if we will have such one, actually, yeah, that, that that's that's crazy always to an understand interesting that topic, market. You know? <laughs> so many interesting yeah. things happening in domestic leagues. Germany, yeah. we see both Euroleague teams uh, going down to mm -hmm. Ulm, and uh, yeah. So until that's finished, obviously the NBA finals are still on. Yeah, and it's okay. You know, one one. So. For the, for for June we are fine. For July we'll have to improvise, yeah. maybe do some retro breakdowns, or or, yeah. or maybe you know something from the summer league, or uh, you know looking at the at the possible uh, national teams and stuff. So mm. you know. yeah, and August will be the pre World Cup time. So basically, yeah. So a lot of stuff coming up on basketnews.com. Join BN Plus uh, community on basketnewscom plus. Uh, there are some I saw you were ready, you know, calling out the bullshit reports on Twitter. You yeah. already, you already pissed about them. First question for Q and A comes it's from really me. It's really tiring. <laughs> it's really tiring because it just takes a lot of time to check if those reports are true or not. And there's a lot of um, stuff that is not just made up, but sometimes you see the influence on, on some people behind that information with the reporter mm. not even knowing that. Uh, or some bullshit information, uh, information, or some old information that is published now, but the the case is closed. So it just it's just tiring because I believe that in the long picture, uh, the reporters they lose the credibility, uh, they lose the trust of the of the readers, and even on basketnews.com, we have a hard time to pick some of the, those stories which are real or not. So I think that this summer will be try to be very. Uh, uh, how to say precise, precise about the, the reports from even some some of the most trusted media outlets. Mm. It's because tough. I just see I just see so many so many reports on Twitter. Like the number of reports have gone through the roof. If I would compare uh, what happened, to what what was happening three four years ago, yeah. and what's happening now, you know, before it's early June. I wasn't seeing reports uh, late late May or early June mm. four or five years ago, three years ago. Right now, I basically see multiple reports each day with players going. And I know a lot of stuff is happening right now, but I know that at this part of the year, so much of it is untrue and it's just, mm. you know, ongoing some, some conversations. Of the, of these I'm not uh, saying every everything is wrong, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, definitely, no. definitely there is movement, but it's just so early yeah. and that you can't really be... Uh, you know, official with the information because it's 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 ongoing talks probably yeah. with multiple teams for players. Yeah, sometimes there is interest 
uh, teams are checking players, teams are asking about players, but those interests are published as if there are some advanced talks, negotiations, mm. or both parts are close to signing or something. So it, it just, it's just really uh, hard to check all those rumors uh, and then to, to gain trust from the reader, readers, sometimes even from the teams, agents, or, or whatsoever, because a lot of stuff is published, which is, which is not true. So it's, it's exhausting part of the year <laughs> for me, because basically I have to be on the phone from, from the morning till, till night, because there's mm. also, you know, USA market with potentially NBA players coming back to Europe or some newcomers uh, heading mm. over there. So it's, it's just tough business, uh, at least until the mid of August, really. Like an agent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not that, not that much. Not I that believe much. that their yeah. job is, is just crazy right now, but, they're, but they're, yeah. They're, it's, they're, they're, the agent's screen time is like what? Uh, 16 hours per day, I think. Close I think to that it. I was listening to Sham's podcast and he said that his, his screen time was like 16 hour, hours, really. So, so casual day Screen time and, uh, and sleep My time. screen time That's is like it. five or six hours per day during like regular day. Mm. So it's, it's, it's not that bad yet. Okay. Not close. Yeah. Let's go with the questions. Let's go with the questions. Uh, We'll start from the one public question, the original link. Which teams will be the most interesting in the offseason regarding transfers, rebuild, and which do you guys think will make the biggest jump next season? On top of that, later, please uh, add which players should make the, their yearly deb debuts next season. That's an interesting question. And uh, I will go to one particular country for two answers. I think uh, Greece will have a really hot summer market. And Maybe uh, north of Athens, probably. I believe both. I see more action in the north of Athens. I believe both teams will have a lot of action. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, w I mean, what kind of action do you anticipate? Uh, where, where are you most intrigued about Olympiakos in particular? Because of Vezenkov's replacement? Of course. I mean, Vezenkov is such a unique, like we talked about many times during the season. He's such a unique player, MVP of the season, and and changing him is is a hard task i think it creates also a domino effect you know how do you approach do you just you know go one by one do you change him with one player or maybe you sign uh, a power forward and a guard to replace him you maybe add the number of guards so uh it's really an interesting topic i think if he leaves which is basically reported right now that he's there is a high chance of leaving, or is it another report that's that, uh, that's, that's bullshit? That's this in, uh, tricky part of premature. I wouldn't say reporting. Uh, there's just you know leaks, uh, and not just leaks. Uh, I think it's just as you mentioned. There are a lot of early reports, and sometimes those early reports might be misleading because the situation might change a lot of times, and especially when it takes the NBA players or those potential NBA call-ups like Vezenkov and Misic, which is true. Uh, with Vezenkov, at first, it was almost clear that he's for sure done with uh, Olympiakos. But for instance, in the recent days, I heard that the situation is changing a little bit, and it's not clear yet if he's really going there because it takes a lot of different questions for instance his nba buyout uh his potential salary in the nba if he's not in getting if he's not getting like i don't know uh, four or five million net in the nba which means almost 10 million, 10 million contract uh basically for him this is not the best business decision to, to go overseas because also we have to pay the 1.5 million buyout okay and be uh, team uh covers half of it but then you have to pay from your own pocket so it it might be difficult for him to to go over there because sacramento also they have to do and plan their off-season moves and then to check the salary cap for potential vezenkov's contract and the free agency starts on june uh, july. Uh, on july so i mean a lot of things have to you know uh, combine together and at this point there's uh feeling i would say that there's much uh, there's less confidence that vezenkov will go to the nba when it was uh, during the final Before. four for uh, for, in, for instance which is good news mm -hmm. for olympiakos probably of course i mean you know as i said it it's a, the biggest question mark if he leaves or not then all the other decisions mm -hmm. fall and and probably uh they don't need, they don't need to change much uh, as we have we've been hearing you know the isaiah, isaiah 
Before we go I've to, I've heard his name. Uh, Kanan. Kanan. Finally, she's yeah, Kanan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like hesitating a little bit. We've been doing it wrong uh, for the whole season two just, more. Just before we move on on Kanan. some other players, I wanted to ask you: Would you replace Vazenkov with Nikola Mirotic? Is it a no-brainer for you, or you are a bit hesitate because I see that you're hesitating already? No, I, I was uh, not thinking about Mirotic. Mm. I was thinking about other options. But let's say there's opportunity because Mirotic is kind of probably leaving Barca, and Barca should cover those rumors part. are true. Those rumors are true. Yeah, like they should uh, cover the part of the contract. I mean, it's mm. it's 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 not again. It's not done that he's done in Barca. Uh, mm -hmm. because his contract termination situation is another big thing to solve because from Barca standpoint, okay, you cover a big part of the contract, which is huge. And then basically, let's say, okay, if even if you cover the part of the contract, which is which might be maybe two or even more million euros per season just for the player to leave the team, it means that he wow. signs with the other club and wow. basically you're paying him a star status contract and he's not even playing for your team, and he might be killing your team. So from Barca's standpoint, I don't know how I feel about this situation. But wow. let's say Olympiacos has an opportunity. Vezenko goes to the NBA, they get a buyout, they have this uh, flexibility in the salary cap, and they can sign Mirotic for, I don't know, 1.5, 2 million. Doesn't I'm matter. taking him. You're taking him, right? Yeah. I mean, power forward market in the EuroLeague is so yeah. thin, and you have possibly the chance to sign, you know, a top top the tier. next best power forward in Europe basically yeah, definitely you know obviously uh, everyone remembers what he did in the final four but for the other 75 games he was he was the best player you know on the court m most often than not and uh so yeah I'm, I'm i'm changing that you you don't agree no no, no. Uh, i agree i just think that still mirotic is a bit different player than mezenkov uh he i, I think Obviously, everyone is different from Zenkov. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's unique, just unique. Yeah. With, with how he plays off the ball, but at the same time, he can he can make the same three pointers. He can you know drive with the ball uh, from the perimeter. He can yeah. post up. So he's a really versatile player as mm -hmm. well. He's not, I don't know, uh, three and D type of forward that just defends and, and shoots the free when he he can create for himself, just as Zenkov could create from by himself, by moving. So his versatility would be huge for Olympiacos. And I believe that if you commit to Olympiacos, it means that you're kind of ready to sacrifice some of the touches uh, and, and your role, because in Olympiacos, his mm -hmm. role would be different. More more players are touching the ball, more players are involved, and it, it wouldn't be so heavily, uh, you know, Mirotic-related offense. Mm. Even in Barca, it, I wouldn't say that it was everything was going through Mirotic. I no. mean, Charles is using the mismatches and uh, no. using a lot of different players. Says schemes for everyone. So yeah, so it's kind of closer to to Olympiakos uh, playing style. But I would really believe that. I mean, Mirotic, he's he turns thirty three uh, during the season. Uh, he, I think that he would love this uh, atmosphere and experience of playing for the system which appreciates uh, ball movement. Jorgos Borsalka's leadership is different than Shognas Esikavich's uh, leadership. Athens is great. Uh, Pereus is also great. So I think it would be also interesting opportunity for him mm -hmm. to play for uh, Olympiakos. I, I, think, uh, I think it's time for a change, you know. I mean, uh, he has spent uh, years in Barcelona, did not have the best outcome, but he was amazing there in his time. Maybe he just needs a fresh start, you know. One cycle closed, you you start a new cycle somewhere else, and Olympia Cos is a great spot. But what Panathinaikos Cos will do is also going to be super yeah. interesting. And another huge rebuild, I think, is around the corner. And, you know, as every summer, we'll see in which direction it will go, because last year we were kind of from the beginning saying, you know, we don't understand this or we don't understand that. And if about Maccabi, we were uh, for the first nine signings saying, wow, this will be a great team. Then one signing, we were kind of, you know, uh, yeah. playing it down, saying, you know, th this it, it doesn't really fit here. But And we were wrong about that. But from the start, it was, you know, looking like really good uh, investments. 
uh, about the power situation, we were kind of from the beginning uh, really hesitant about how we're the, they were building the team. So uh, I think there will be lots of changes there and it's going to be interesting if they're if they mm. nail nail it yeah. this time and, and improve. Money makes a difference, obviously. Uh, they had to select from different pool of players compared to what we're hearing now. Uh, some rumors about Punter, Lazard, even Brandon Davis. I would see him going to Panathinaikos, for instance. They're they're le- legit. Some some of information that was published is is old, or maybe these players are coming back and forth. For for instance, Matthias uh, Lazard, but a lot of movement expected in Panathinaikos. A lot of money mm. gonna be invested. Uh, I've actually heard that some of the players were already signed even before Ataman uh, came, but with Ataman you can expect some some big moves because Ataman is not going to the project which doesn't have ambitions to shook up the market. And Ataman knows how to build a team. And that was pr- probably the best coach for Panathinaikos, which is not uh, impacted by the GM decisions. Ataman is the, I, w- I would even say, first GM and then the head coach uh, of his team. And we can all remember what he did with FS in 2017-18 season. No, starting from 18-19 season. After they were last. They were last. He brought Mitsich, Larkin, Bobois. He brought everybody, basically, for for the upcoming four or five years. And they made it Final Four uh, the the, the following season. Uh, We'll see if he can repeat this amazing uh, success. But... There's the fact that he knows how to build a team and mm. Panthinaikos has the money to do it. And if they manage to bring players like Kevin Punter, for instance, I would love to see Brandon Davis and Panthinaikos. I mean, they can they can make some noise the next mm. year. That's for sure. I'll have one more team. I also have one more team. One more team? Yeah. At- Ataman's X team? Could it, could it no, be? No, no. No. Yeah. Okay, because I had the FS. Yeah. As also, I mean, not because uh, they will probably make a lot of changes, but I just think it's, for me, it's really interesting to see what they're going to do, how they're going to react to Atoma leaving, to a, you know, bad season they had. Who are they going to change? Because before the season, they were dubbed as, you know, the, con- the, the, the number one contenders for the title again, and uh, they they failed the regular season. Who are they changing? You know, I see some potential spots, you know, where they could use the the the, the changes. Um the Vasilia Missy situation every summer he's rumored to leave. He now with the new agency and stuff like that, maybe he's leaving then he's like LeBron of, of Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> every year it was it was like one year uh, agreement. And, and so yeah, if he leaves, who do you sign? Shane Larkin situation, you know a uh, power forward spot is kind of kind of been you know uh, not an issue but maybe do you look into that to cha- to change that as well do you sign a defensive center uh Josh Nebo if 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 mm-hmm. Mitch says you know Josh Nebo could be you know a nice uh, pick and roll player on offense and a rim protector on the defensive side so mm-hmm. It's just this is interesting to see what FS uh, will do this summer and who will who did you have as Man, your last? I really think that Monaco can keep surprising. Oh my and god! I, I thought the season is over. We're we're finished talking about Monaco, but no, no. they're okay. they're so exciting because I really think that you should name your Twitter account Monaco Stan. Monaco has a really good chance to recruit Nikola Mirotic. So this was a small part of the entire Urbonus Q&A episode. If you want to watch the entire episode, join BN Plus community on basketnews.com slash plus.